We just made this portable standing display using a one sheet of plywood and the print and cut feature in Lightburn. And we'll show you how we did it right now. What is up? Welcome back. You like to do a little bit of make it. So do we. And we have a new video each week. This week, we're going big. We're putting a whole sheet of plywood, four by eight, through our pass through and our big laser. You guys have been asking about the craft food stands that we made a couple of craft shows ago. We used them for a couple of shows. We really love them. They're easy to transport. They're much lighter than the metal racks, which we love, but these are better. And I think they just have a better aesthetic overall. So we're gonna show you how we made those and how we assemble them. Step one, we're gonna gather all of our supplies. We needed a full sheet of plywood. It's half inch, four foot by eight foot. This is double-sided, finished on both sides. It's a maple plywood, a nice shiny finish on both sides so that you can use either side or both sides, depending upon how it's displayed on this display rack. I mean, it's nice looking plywood. <laughs> and we needed one one-inch dowel rod. Step two, we're gonna make all of our cuts. Most of our cuts will be done on our big 100 watt laser. We're gonna be showing you that print and cut feature within Lightburn. We showed you this last week on the smaller Omtec Polar Laser with our Wednesday Adams fan art. But this week we're gonna show you how to use that print and cut feature within Lightburn on a much larger scale to do a little different type of project. So we're gonna use it to do a pass through. All right, let's open our file and get it prepped. We'll just open our SVG. It's definitely bigger than our cut area. All right. I'm going to start by drawing a box around this whole thing. Let's we'll see what it is. While we're here, we'll group the whole thing. Control G. We're at 91, so we'll say 92 by 41. Let's draw a box. We'll make this box. Go ahead and Take off the aspect ratio lock. We'll make this box 43 by 93. We'll select everything and we'll center them both. Alright, close this inside piece. 92, what's this outside piece? 93. Alright, cool. I'm gonna select this box, we're gonna make a copy. Control C, Control V. Now this box, I want to represent my cut area. The first box is the entire thing. So we'll shrink this down from 93 to 34. My cut area is 35 or 36. We'll just see how many pieces we can get out of here. Can we get three even pieces? Control C, Control V. Oh yeah, look at that. There's definitely a good overlap. Control C, Control V, let's check it. Oh, yeah. That's that's great. We can actually go a little smaller. Let's take this down to like oh let's get in between these circles. We'll take it down to 32. 30, is 30 mark. in between the circles so like the control C control V it's close control V oh yeah that works all right so 31 inches high so we'll put one at the top and at the bottom. We'll get rid of this middle guy. So we'll grab the outer box and the one in the middle. We'll group them for now. Now we'll grab this guy and the box. We'll say a line top, a line center. And then we'll grab this big one in the bottom box. Say a line bottom, a line center. All right, great. We're going to use these as reference points. So let's go ahead and 
control A for everything. We're going to start at the top, so we'll move it down. Put this in my cut area. Now we're going to have to add some registration marks so that when we move it, we'll know where the laser head actually is. So to do that, we're going to draw a little circle. Draw a circle, hold shift, keep the aspect ratio. We're going to lock the aspect ratio. I just want it half inch, 25. Let's zoom in so we can see my little circle. Now we're going to add a line. Oops. Control Z, click, draw a little line, hold shift. Hit escape to get rid of the line tool. We'll select it. We also want this, this 0.5. Drag it down here. We'll zoom in a little more. Control C to copy, Control V to paste. We'll grab it and hold shift so it turns on its axis every 45. Line them all up. Align center. Line both vertical and horizontal. Doom. We'll group it. Now we'll give this a different color. Let's say blue. All right. I'm going to put one down here near this mark. Intersect should snap there. Now control C to copy. I'm gonna come over to this point now. Put my corner. Control V to paste. Zoom in. Let's make sure it's snapped into place. Now we'll go down here to these these intersections. Control V to paste. It'll snap in the line, and then over here, control V to paste. Ooh, that's pretty good. It'll snap into place. Let me make sure this one's lined up. Yeah, they all look good. Now we're going to ungroup this piece again. Control U. Grab it again. Control U. All right, now we don't need this outer box anymore. It's like We don't need this one anymore. We can delete it. And now, inside here, we'll ungroup everything. Ungroup. Let's see if it's ungrouped. Yes. All right. These ungrouped. Oops. Yep. Control Z. All right. So we're going to select everything that this box is touching. So we'll select this piece. This foot, the backer, and this foot. It catches just the corner of this foot. Now that this is all selected and the black box is still on top, we'll select the black box. Now we'll go to Laser Tools. We'll go to Tools, Cut Shapes, or Alt Shift C, Cut Shapes. Now you see that it turned these, it cut this like right down the center. It kind of sliced it. It sliced through this foot, sliced through this foot, sliced through the backer. So I'm going to group these and make them a different color for now so I'll be able to tell. Make them purple. Just for a minute. Now I'm going to take this box up here, do the same thing. So I'm going to select this foot, this foot, and the backer. And then the box on top. I'm going to go to Tools, Cut Shapes, bam. 
let's go ahead and make this a different color too. Make this a darker blue. Oop, while we're there, I'll group it, Control D. All right, and that should leave us this piece down here. Let's see if I can select them all, and we'll group them. All right, see how it cut right there? Just sliced right through everything. All right, we got our three different pieces. Now we're going to start by cutting this up top. Now let's put all the colors back. So we'll grab this one, make it red. Grab this bottom one, make it red. Now these blue marks, I just want to engrave. And I want to cut out the red pieces. I want to engrave or score these, these blue marks. These are my registration marks. And I want to cut the red marks, everything in the middle. So I'm going to come back and use these registration marks. So let's get our board loaded and we're going to cut our first section starting at the top. My power for half inch plywood is five, five millimeters per second at 50% power and my score settings are 150% speed and 22% power. Actually, that's a little high. Let me go ahead and make this 200. I just want to score it by 15. Okay. Let's save this while we're here. You know what? I decided I wanted to start at the bottom and pull it towards me. So I'm going to control A, push everything at the, to the top. There, I'm going to do it this way. Now when I pull it to me, the registration marks will be closer to me. I'll be able to see them with the laser a little bit. Yes, I'm going to start from the bottom and pull my way to the top. All right, let me go load my board. Let me go load my board and we're going to cut this first piece. This is our first cut, and then you'll see that it makes the registration marks last. We're just scoring these. I don't know why it didn't score the horizontal registration mark. Yeah, sometimes it has a mind of its own, but that's okay. Dead Eye Kim will be here to help align it later. And we just pull the board down so the registration marks are at the bottom of the cut bed. And now we're going to take this image and pull the image down so that those registration marks are now at the bottom of the cut bed. They don't have to be in the same space. That's what the print and cut feature does, is helps align the image to the cut area. And we're just gonna cut this middle section here. What we're gonna do is move the laser head over to one of the registration marks or near it. You know what, let's start with the left registration mark. Let's move the laser head to the left side. Now we're gonna move the laser head to the center of that registration mark that we just scored, even though it's missing the horizontal line. And this is because we want to teach the Lightburn software where the laser heads are going to be. Now, because it doesn't have that horizontal line, Kim's going to help me line this up. <laughs> right. This, this is a split screen. So I'm on the other side of the laser bed. He can't exactly see if it's lined up. So that's what I was doing. This old dead eye was going to help him line up that head. And you'll see that the first pulse is close, but not quite. Now I did bring the speed down to three millimeters per second so the laser head wasn't jumping around or moving too fast to try to line it up. Now again, we don't have a red laser pointer on this machine, so we're gonna close it and just give it a quick pulse to see where the dot is actually landing inside those registration marks. Now it looks like we're putting the laser head down onto the board. It's just that warped. Um, and it's just that left side that seems to be warped. Right. So we wouldn't normally keep it that close. In other areas, it's it's to the correct height. Now the second pulse, pretty close. I mean, looking pretty dead on. That's why I was there. So let's go ahead and select this registration mark. And we're going to go up to Laser Tools, Print and Cut. And we're going to set that first target position. Now let's go set the second target position. 
We're gonna move the laser head all the way over to the second target again. I brought the speed up so that we can move the head quickly. But now I'm gonna lower the speed back down to three millimeters per second so that it's not jumping around and it's a little, a little smoother to move it around inside that registration. Tiny movements, yes. Tiny movements. Tiny slow movements are way better than fast jumpy movements. From here you can see that the laser head is a little higher up and a better a better position, that Z axis. Yeah, it's because the left side is is warped. You gotta play the hand that's dealt you, right? <laughs> yeah. Use the boards they send you. All right, we're gonna pulse this and see where that dot is landing inside the registration mark. Just a quick little pulse. Now, Kim's actually <laughs> holding the camera for this pulse, so you can't see where it's landing, but I saw that it was a little bit high, and I think it was a little bit to the left. Give it a scooch. Um, Kim doesn't have a very steady hand. Well, sometimes we get a little distracted. I think some of us know about that. All right, let's pulse this again, and we're going to find out where this lands one more time. I don't know what Kim is doing with the camera, but good luck. Good luck <laughs> Look, seeing right if here, it lands inside. You'll be able to see. You're never going to see if it landed inside oh. the registration <laughs> mark. But trust me, it did. So we're going to grab that second registration point. We're going to go to laser tools. We're going to set the second target. Now we're going to select everything that we want cut, including those bottom registration marks that have already been scored. We want to go ahead and grab those again. Those are the ones that we just set as targets. We want to make sure you get both sides. And now we also want to grab those second registration marks at the top. So let's make sure we grab those too because we want to score both sets of registration marks this time. So let's grab those. Let's make sure I grab those. Thank you. Now we're going to go back to laser tools, print and cut one more time, and then we're going to align image to targets. So any, if this was off or askew, it should have just shifted the image that we're going to send to the laser. And you'll see that it is aligned because the bottom two score marks or registration marks are now green. They have a green outline to them. Let's go cut that second set. All right, these came out pretty good. I mean, that registration mark scored right over the other registration mark. You can barely tell on the left side where those met. On the right side, you can Yeah, just it cuts tell. perfectly. That is mostly um, I think if we, would have, if we would have had the horizontal line in there, so know exactly where it was, I think it would have been better. That first one. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Now it's time to slide this board down so that those new registration marks are at the bottom of our cut bed. And we're gonna slide the image down in light burn to match. Now we're gonna move it on down so that those registration marks, those last set of registration marks are at the bottom of the cut area now. And we're gonna move the laser to the left side again. Third verse, same as the second. So this time we actually had the horizontal score mark, so it was actually a little bit easier to move around and center. We still had to pulse it. And the left side was still pretty warped. But it's dead center, so we're gonna grab that registration mark. We're gonna go to laser tools. This time we're gonna reset the print and cut. And now we're gonna go to laser tools and set first target. Now let's go back and set the second target, just like we did before. I'm gonna grab the registration mark. Now let's go move the laser head and set the second registration mark on the laser. So moving these, moving the laser head to these X, Y coordinates, and then going up to laser tools and setting these targets is gonna let the light burn software know where the image actually lands on the laser and then it should send the correct coordinates correct cut coordinates to the laser 
kind of like these two things are talking to each other. All right, everything is selected. We're gonna align, align the image to the targets, align object to the targets. We get our little green highlights around our things and we are good to go. This print and cut feature is pretty amazing. Look at where that lined right up. Here, this lines up with the last cut. Bam, look at that. <laughs> there you can see where it went over the registration mark again, perfect. And you, you can barely tell where they met, where the two lines met. Well, I think that's mostly charring. I mean, it really does leave a smooth surface. Yeah, they're Came right on top great. of each other. And I used almost all of the board. Look at that. And for the second cuts we made, we used our one inch dowel. We cut 12 five and a half inch pieces. And two one and a half inch pieces. Step three, assembly. We're gonna make the easy feet. We're gonna glue three of these feet together, making them an inch and a half thick. We're gonna use that wood glue and we're gonna roll it on to make sure that there is consistent adhesion all throughout the whole side of this foot. Then we're gonna add a dowel rod through the holes on either side of the slot, firming up each foot. That way there won't be any wiggle. And it keeps them perfectly aligned when they're put together. Once the easy feet are dry, we're simply going to slide the backer into the feet. Now both the top of the feet and the bottom of the backer have a fanned out inlet that will help you slide them into place. Did you know you could get all of our files, behind the scene content, and even a Kim and Garrett After Dark podcast? As well as monthly Zoom calls, access to a secret Facebook group, and we'll even send you one of these fancy t-shirts, all for $20 a month. It's the best way to support this channel. So join us over at Patreon.com. Step four, and now we have the exits. Just putting these dowels, these one inch dowels, into the slots, and you are adding the shelves. We're just using them to add maybe a sign. Or we can hang them using these little hooks. This is it all put together. Now, if you don't have a large laser and you can't use the pass through feature like we did for a half inch plywood, we do offer this kit in our store starting this weekend. This kit comes with a back panel, a set of easy feet, four shelves, and 12 pegs. Look at the height of this, this thing. This is perfect because we can actually zip tie this to the top of our tent. If it gets too windy, use the tent for an anchor. That was by design. <laughs> All right, well, we are about out of time. So if you're not going to join us for the patron after show, we will see you next week where we'll do it, build it, and make it again. And I don't really want to balance anything. I kind of like how it looks right here. I'll leave it alone. <laughs>